Hey everyone, this is Ryan Jeske with the Prescott Caliber Club and today I wanted to go over some information on the 2019 NCLV coronavirus. Okay guys, we are back. I'd like to ask that if you enjoy the content here on the Prescott Caliber Club channel, please share our videos to your social media pages. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notifications bell icon. That'll keep you up to date. If you'd like to help support us here on the channel, go down into the description section down below. That will um, have a number of discount codes, links, and things like that where you can go to uh, help support the channel. Um, if you're looking for an EMP shield, we have a discount code Cal Club for $50 off each unit. If you shop Amazon, there's a link, click that, start shopping. Some of Bezos' money goes to me. Um, and also, if you're looking for a VPN, there's a link for up to 88% off of Pure VPN. And all of these ways help support us here on the channel. So, anyway, guys, what am I here to talk about today? I've done a number of videos um, reporting just basically the news and a little bit of commentary on, on my thoughts about the 2019 NCOB coronavirus. Um, I wanted to do a little more in depth video today that included some research. Um, really a lot of uh, video watching, a lot of reading, a lot of research, and then I have some actual um, anonymous sources from some alphabet agencies that, that have pointed me towards some information as well. So um, I guess let's just get into this and I've taken some notes here. This will be different from um, a lot of my usual videos because I'm actually reading from, from my notes and things, but um, I guess the question we need to ask first is what is this thing? Is it a flu? Is it just a bug? Are there people just gonna get sick and then it's gonna get better? What is this thing? And and what I've been able to come up with is that we're, we're not really sure. It seems like a flu-like virus. Um, it spreads similar. It, um, you know, it gives you flu-like symptoms, uh, fever, uh, it, it, but the bottom line is that it really is affecting your respiratory system and your lungs. So most people who are succumbing to this um, are are actually dying of pneumonia. So they're getting fluid in their lungs and they're suffocating and they're and they're dying because of that. Um, it spreads uh, by droplets or mist expelled through the air. So it's not um, necessarily airborne. I heard a couple reports of that, but nothing really confirmed. I just have heard that it is. Uh, you know, it's almost airborne is kind of the way people are looking at it because as people are walking around sneezing, coughing, and, and all of these types of things, it's misting through the air and it's doing what it's doing and it can sit outside of the body for a, a bit of time. Um, I've heard up to 12 hours officially confirmed here, but what I've really um, also heard is up to a number of days. So I'm not really sure what to think or do with that information aside from air on the side of caution and I just don't really want to be around anybody um, you know I the potential is here for a global threat on this topic with this virus and I'm gonna go into some of the reasons why um, but I'm gonna go into that in just a second here the uh, there's a couple indicators uh, the full full corporate shutdown in China is a major one the fact that um, all non-essential services are are shut down and even to be honest some essential services like the hospitals and things like that are actually shut down um, you, you, if you look at the streets of Wuhan right now they're just empty. there was a really eerie video that came out and I think um, I don't remember what channel it was on that I saw but I, I saw this video where basically people are quarantined in this city nobody's traveling the streets and people are sitting up on the balconies of their hotel room and, you know, in the dark, in the middle of the night, just kind of yelling out to each other and chanting and doing all these different things. It, it was really, really creepy to see. Um, but the fact that China has locked down somewhere between 12 to 16 cities, somewhere in that range, um, these people are, are stuck there with no services, no anything, and they're building more hospitals. Um, all of the leaked information we've seen out of China has not actually been seeming like it's... Um, misinformation or false information it's seeming more and more like it's legitimate information and that includes the numbers coming off the Wuhan coronavirus global cases this is um, John Hopkins um, that today is now up to 6057 confirmed cases so this has already 
surpassed uh, the SARS outbreak. And, and that's pretty concerning because we don't even know what's going on yet. Um, so why is this bad and who is this bad for? It's really bad for everyone because of the way it gets carried, because of uh, the ability to transfer this to other people during the incubation period. But who it's most dangerous for are the young and the elderly, like most of these types of diseases. Um, but as we're seeing this now break, right, as now we're, we're seeing this come out in other countries and other places and not just in the hospitals in China, we're seeing that this does affect young healthy people, you know, and like myself, I don't know, 18 to 40 year old individuals, things like that. We are seeing that they can be affected and they can be infected um, at a much scarier rate than the flu. The flu doesn't affect us as much and us being young, healthy individuals. Um, so that brings me into the question of, is this worse than the flu? And my conclusion is absolutely yes, hands down. Anybody that's telling you that it's not, that it's just a flu or it's just uh, not a big deal and it's just like the flu, I, I believe is, is misleading you and I don't understand where they're getting their information or how they're calculating it or any of that. So I wanted to give you some of the information that I have on this and some of the numbers that I've looked up and I'm gonna compare the, the flu to the 2019 NCOV virus and then I'm also going to throw in there a comparison to the 1918 Spanish flu, which was the last uh, major epidemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it. So um, the flu, right? We're going to talk about RO, um, the RO number. And that's basically, if the RO is one, that means that me, one, is able to transmit to one other person. If the RO is one, it's one to one. Now, if it goes above one, that means one person is transmit is able to transmit to more than one person. So imagine if you got, if your RO level was, I don't know, 20, that means one person is affecting 20. Now I've heard numbers as high as 10, um, but they're not real, real verifiable. You know, I, I don't know. They're just not, they're not really based on anything that I've seen. They're just rumblings on leaked information and stuff like that. But the RO level of the, of the seasonal flu is somewhere between 1 and 1.28%. And that affects millions of people. Okay, the RO on the 2019 NCOV virus is somewhere between 2 to 3.8. And that's, those are actual numbers. Uh, the World Health Organization says it's somewhere between 1.4 to 2.5, and I've, heard, I've heard reports all the way up to 5.8%. It's crazy. So the next number that I want to talk about with you is the, is the CFR. That's the case fatality rate, okay? The seasonal flu has a case fatality rate of 0.1%, a tenth of a percent, okay? The CFR of the 2019 NCOV is somewhere between three to 10%. And this is um, this is some information that um, came, that I, I got from Full Spectrum Survival, so we're gonna have to reference them to verify this. But if that is true, okay, if that is true, that means this is 30 times more deadly than the flu, than the seasonal flu, 30 times. Now, okay, so let's look at this and say, oh, well, uh, you know, is it really three to 10? And if it's just three, what does that mean? Well, currently, based on the numbers today, that's 6,057 confirmed cases. Keep in mind, the number was nowhere near that yesterday. There are 132 deaths. That gives us a 2.17% CFR based on the fake numbers coming out of China right now. That's 2.17%. So if the World Health Organization is saying, somewhere between 1.4 and 2.5. The actual readout as of right now is 2.17, which is going to continue to increase. I think it is absolutely fair to say that this is somewhere in the realm of 2.5% CFR. Now, when you take a look at that, the official Spanish flu CFR was 2.5%. And the RO on the 1918 Spanish flu was 1.8. This is somewhere between 2 and 3.8, right? We're talking, like I said, 2.5. Let's go with the high estimate of the World Health Organization and somewhere on the low estimate of everybody else out here that I'm, I'm reading. Um, the 1918 Spanish flu affected, infected, I'm sorry, infected 500 million people and somewhere between 50 
to 100 million died. That was 1.8 RO with an official CFR of 2.5%. But do the math, folks, do the math. This is somewhere between 10 to 20% CFR on that. That was the real number. I don't understand where, they're, where the official count is 2.5, because if you take a look at the whole, it's somewhere between 10 and 20%. This 2019 NCOV is, is being estimated to be somewhere between three to 10% on the high end. That's up to 30 times. Again, that came from full spectrum survival. This is mirroring, mimicking, looking much, much, much more like the Spanish flu of 1918 than a seasonal flu. So I don't know how anybody is, is sitting here comparing the seasonal flu to the 2019 NCOV virus if they're not also comparing it to the, the 1918 Spanish flu. That's crazy. The numbers are much more um, correlated to the Spanish flu than they are to the seasonal flu. Um, a couple of other concerns that, that have hit me is that the seasonal flu has a, a need to go to the ICU for ICU type services uh, is, is less than 5%. Based on the numbers from what we're seeing out of China, the ICU need for the 2019 NCOV is 25%. Five times as many people need to go to the ICU than they do for the flu. And again, are these real numbers coming out of China? Because I don't believe so. I've also heard that the micron value is very small and N95s may not be enough um, to cover that. This was not just out of one source. This was out of multiple sources, okay? Um, and uh, Full Spectrum also mentioned uh, there's a sustained general transmission rate that was indicating uh, up to fourth generation transmissions. That's huge. That's huge. Currently, uh, there are more deaths than there are recoveries. This is another thing to look at. Of all the people who are contra uh, contracting this virus, right? Everybody who is getting it, more people are dying than there are recovering. Now, yes, we have a lot of people in limbo right now and these numbers are all gonna change, but I'm trying to just go with what I've been able to dig up in the last 24 hours. The bottom line here is that, is that time.com has stated that this may be 30 times worse than what we know, okay? Unofficial reports say it's upwards of 100 times. Those are reports coming directly out of China. Now, a lot of those videos, those leaked videos and things are being verified as, as accurate. They're, uh, I shouldn't say verified as accurate, uh, being verified as um, coming out of China. Okay, they're, they're actually videos and reports and things coming out of China. Now, if they're lying to us, who knows? If the Chinese government's lying to us, who knows? They are, they are, that's my opinion, but um, I don't know. This is not looking to me like it's as simple as the flu, okay? It just doesn't. And I feel it's a disservice for me to not bring my opinions to you. I urge you to look all of this stuff up. Do all of your own research. Try to disprove me. Remember, I hope I'm wrong. I absolutely hope I am wrong. I do not want to be right about this stuff. Um, my sources on the information that I've gathered here are a number of different uh, YouTube channels and things like that. Um, I've, I've done a bit of watching um, people like Patriot Nurse, Hoople's Cat, um, Full Spectrum Survival, as well as sources like the CDC, um, kind of more uh, controversial sources where some of these Chinese videos are being leaked. Um, and then I also do have an additional source and I will not name who he or she is uh, but they are an ex-security contractor. They are a security analyst in an alphabet agency. They've given me some, some information that I can't really even divulge here. I can only kind of hint at. Um, I will not discuss who that was uh, ever under any circumstance. It just isn't going to happen. Um, and uh, the other web, the other uh, resource that I've used is is the U.S. Patent Office website, which does have some information that's interesting on this. But I'm not going to go into that here too much. Now I wanted to talk about a few of the controversial topics that have me feeling like this is a uh, 
possibly, potentially, a conspiracy. The first thing that actually has me very, very much concerned that this is a major issue were these lab fires, okay, about, I don't know exactly when it was, three months back or so, there were reports of labs in Russia, and I believe it was like two labs in one day, had an explosion and caught fire. Now, when you looked into what these labs did, they housed the most dangerous things on the planet, the plague, SARS, MERS, Ebola, all of these types of things. They had these viruses there. Uh, there were a number of them that started on fire and had some incidents. And this was all in like a two week period. I believe there was two labs in one day and I'm almost positive there was a third lab just a week or so after that. But I haven't been able to find that info and verify it again. So I don't know what that is, but is that part of this? Because that's when I started following this story. So for those of you out there who are questioning my motives in this or why am I bringing this information to you, I've been following this for three months. I've been following this since Marfugel, since Marfugel broke the story about these lab fires. That was when I got turned on to this whole thing. And um, now here we are three months later. Isn't that a little suspicious? If if you were in my shoes and you've been watching this concerned, wondering where what is this all about? Why are these labs doing what they're doing? And is something getting out? And then three months later, this is happening. This is highly concerning. Not only were there the labs in Russia, there were two labs in Syria that had a recent breach. Is that part of this? Another report of a similar lab in Iran. Is that part of this? The bio lab in Wuhan has been doing, um, and this is going to be, I can't, reveal my source on this, but they have been doing things that we don't do here in the United States. I'm talking cloning, testing reproductive uh, ability of cloned patients, not humans, I don't believe. But regardless, they're doing some stuff that's really odd. And my inside sources tell me that this lab has had over five breaches in the past um, in the past few years has as many as five unintentional releases of viruses or bacteria out of that lab. This did not start in a fish market. And I've been saying that from day one. Um, and I believe somebody finally has come out officially and said that it's possible that it may have come out of the lab in Wuhan. Thank you. It did. It absolutely did, in my opinion, okay? Um, I also have a question. Why are we bringing plane loads of people back somewhere? Back here from, I say here because I'm in the US, but uh, Europe's having the same issue as we are. We're bringing these people back. It's not that we don't care for our folks over there, but how can you bring people out of this crazy quarantine and bring them into here? And they're bringing them to Anchorage, Alaska, the, the uh, US people, right? Are they gonna quarantine them there? I got a little inside info on that. They might be getting them there sticking them in something and quarantining them here on our soil. I don't know. It just seems weird and it doesn't seem like a very smart move. I'm, I'm not really understanding. Um, they need to be quarantined for at least a couple of weeks. Uh, that, there's no way to tell that they even have the virus or not, you know, whether they have it or not. There's no way to tell that safely within a couple week period. So they need to be quarantined for a couple of weeks. Um, but... To be honest with you, the Super Bowl is coming up this weekend, and one of the most concerning things that I was turned on to yesterday was that the CDC is setting up a 40,000 plus containment center just 1.5 miles from the Super Bowl. You can take that or leave that information here. I will not tell you where I got that information, but I have that information and I tend to trust my source. Um, now, I wanted to kind of address whether or not, you know, there's a conspiracy here. Is there? Do you guys believe that something's going on? Um, I don't know whether there is or isn't. I suppose it's somewhat irrelevant at this point in time because the concern needs to be, you know, rational healthcare and hygiene type concerns. We need to just worry about what we can what each of us can do to, to 
limit the spread of this thing. But do they know this thing's going to spread and they're just not telling us? Are they waiting until after whatever? I don't know, the Super Bowl, the... I don't, I don't know. I don't know. This is just the strangest thing and that Super Bowl thing threw me for a loop. Um, are they telling... Are they delaying telling us the truth? And I believe that is probably the most likely scenario. It's not that they don't know. It's not that they don't have the info. They're just delaying it to avoid panic until they have some kind of solution. And I don't know that they do. That's a very, very bad indicator when the government's not telling you something that we suspect is going on and there really is no reason for it other than they don't know how to handle it. And I believe that's really what's going on here. So possible reasons why this could be an intentional release. Um, cause a rift during an election year, distraction from other happenings. Um, it could be fiscal, financial. It could be they don't want to upset the economy, the world economy, um, at least not like that. It could be that. I think if the conspiracy theories are proven to be true, I think the real, real potential is, is population control in, in the NWO agenda. That's just... If this was an intentional release, it's about that. That's my opinion. It could be other things. It could definitely could be other things, but um, that's my opinion. So now what do we do? How do we stay safe? How do we keep protected? And I heard somebody say this today and it was very profound and powerful. They said, you don't have to get this disease, uh, this virus. You don't have to. It's up to you. It's up to me. It's up to us collectively whether or not we want to spread this thing and get it. If everybody in the United States of America were to just self-quarantine right now for the next three weeks or so, it wouldn't do what I'm worried it's going to do. Now, I know that that's not feasible, okay? I'm not telling, saying that that's what we should be doing. I'm just making a point that it is up to us and we need to weigh our options. Are we willing to quit our jobs and stay home? to try to avoid getting this virus. I don't know. It's something you need to decide for yourself. Um, the biggest thing, the biggest concern obviously is gonna be for the elderly and the young. Those are the most susceptible to um, succumbing to this and, and actually dying from this. Um, but as this thing is starting to get out and the information on um, coming out of China is kind of getting to us, we're finding out that this doesn't just affect the elderly and the young and the compromised. We're finding that it does affect healthy individuals, right? Um, we can still get it. So I'm wondering if we're going to see these numbers do things that are very, very strange relative to SARS, MERS, swine flu, and those types of things, right? Um, they're already looking different. We have already surpassed the SARS total numbers. It's, it's wild. Um, so for the, the, Folks who are compromised, if you have, I don't know, a respiratory condition, if you have, uh, if you're if you're old and your immune system's compromised, if you're a young, young baby, uh, you shouldn't go to work if you're a young baby. But in all seriousness, you should be limiting your exposure to the outside. If at all possible, don't leave for a few weeks. That's honestly where I'm at. If I, if I was, uh, had a very serious condition, I would be in my home not leaving, not allowing anything in or out for a few weeks. I just, it would be this, you know, better safe than sorry, better safe than sorry. For the rest of us, there really isn't much we can do. Um, aside from limiting how often we're going out and going into the public and doing things, um, there really isn't a whole lot that we can do. So it's going to be your typical stuff, hygiene, keep your clothes clean, keep yourself clean, right? You don't want to be touching things. And I just did just shower and clean myself up. So, um, you know, you don't want to be reaching back here and then rubbing in your face. And now somebody coughed on the back of your head and it's in your eye. You're done. Um, hygiene, 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 hygiene. Cover your coughs and sneezes and those types of things. Wash your hands alcohol, um, hand sanitizer, anything, any and everything, do it. Um, and then your, uh, you know, your typical stuff, your, uh, you know, I don't know, you don't want to be sucking on other people's spit. I don't know. I don't know what that would look like for most of you. But for me, I got a little kid, so I could have a booger in my mouth at any moment. Who knows? And that's dangerous. It sounds funny, but it's dangerous. So guys, like I said, 
I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm not trying to worry anybody. I have friends, I have family, I have other content creators, I have strangers um, giving me mixed, you know, mixed reviews on what they what they think of my videos and my opinions on this. But I wanted to do a video with you guys showing you some information that I actually picked up. This isn't just me being a, a crazy maniac here. Um, if you take a look at just the last four days, let's go five, last five days growth of this virus um, exposure. Five days ago, there were 916 confirmed cases. Four days ago, there were 2,000 doubled. Three days ago, there were 2.7 thousand. Two days ago, uh, one day ago, 4.4 thousand. And today there are over 6,000 confirmed cases with 132 deaths. I do not believe these numbers are accurate and I believe we are going to see 10 to 30 times that. I, the final numbers, that's my estimation. I might be wrong, I could be wrong, I'm probably wrong, but that's my opinion. So guys, I want nothing more than for you guys to stay safe, be prepared, don't get scared, don't freak out. Even if you catch something and you have a fever, don't freak out. There's nothing you can do once you have it. You need to go and get that figured out. The bottom line is we need to stay calm. We need to stay rational. We need to pay attention to numbers. We need to really look at this. My biggest concern is that the numbers we have are not anywhere near the real numbers. And people can say, oh, well, that's just China and that's just what they do. Yes, it is, but it's absolutely detrimental information for us to have. We need that information so we can understand what it is we're facing. What if the total, what if the total number of infected right now is 90,000 to 100,000? Would we still be bringing planes over here? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I feel like we wouldn't, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I just think those numbers are pertinent and we need the information out of China so we can really determine the earlier numbers that I was talking about. The RO, the CFR, right? The, uh, the, the amount of ICU that's going to be needed for this. Um, we don't have these numbers. We don't have them. We have BS numbers that have been limited by China and their inability to give us accurate information because they're always trying to save face. I don't know people. It has me very concerned. I think this is going to be worse than most of us think. It's already beyond SARS, okay? I don't know. If you've got children, if you've got elderly people in your family, uh, compromised immune systems and things like that, I think you should be very concerned about this. I think you should be taking all the possible precautions to keep those people as safe as possible. That may include keeping you as safe as possible if you are the primary caretaker or the caretaker or a caretaker for any of these types of people as well. I think the potential for this to spread is wild. Uh, up to two weeks, up to two weeks of an incubation period and you can transmit during that time. There's people walking around out here. We don't know who they are and they're, they're transmitting this thing. So guys, like I said, I'm not trying to drum up a bunch of fear. I'm not trying to upset anyone. I'm not trying to cause any trouble here. I just wanted to make a video explaining to you why I am taking the positions I'm taking, a little bit of information on where I get my sources and my info on this, and, um, and really to explain my concerns about the situation and the scenario we find ourselves in. I really truly think this is going to be much bigger than many of us are expecting. I think that many people are going to get sick and I think that a lot of people are going to pass away from, um, from this. I think this is going to be beyond you know, what we've seen in, in recent past. So I'm not trying to drum up you know, a, bunch of, a bunch of crap, I'm not trying to cause a bunch of trouble or anything. I just wanted to make a video explaining to you why I have the position and the, and the opinions that I do. So guys, I hope that until next time, you guys stay safe and keep prepping.